Boketov Kharim. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. We have a powder keg that has already exploded in the Middle East. The Saudi troops are, according to some reports, actually in Yemen. They have um, amassed a huge amount of troops on the border there, uh, originally reported here by Al Jazeera. It says Saudi Arabia assembles massive force on the Yemen border. Uh, reinforcements were sent to the border after heavy exchange of fire with the Houthis ahead of a planned five-day truce. Uh, Saudi Arabia has assembled uh, a mass of additional forces in its border with Yemen after trading heavy artillery and rocket fire with Yemen's Houthi fighters prior to a proposed truce uh, taking effect. Uh, Al Jazeera, Mohammed Val reporting from Riyadh. Uh, said our, uh, Saudi Arabia's defense ministry announced on Monday that a massive force had reached uh, uh, Nairon on its way to taking its position to the front lines adjacent to the Yemeni territory following Monday's exchange of fire. Uh, there's also other reports that Nursla is uh, also banning together with, uh, that's Al Nursla, the, the uh, Middle East fighting force that has been much in Syria that is going to band together with the Houthis in order to, to stop, uh, as they call it, the aggressors, the Saudi Arabia, for, for invading uh, the Yemeni's border there. Uh, that's just to give you a little bit of insight there on, on what's going on there. Uh, Barack Obama has warned, and this is on the Economic Times, that uh, of dangers to Israel if Iran deal is blocked. Uh, he is saying that there will actually be missiles that will fall on Tel Aviv if this deal gets blocked at all. Uh, according to the article here, it says Jerusalem's President Barack Obama told U.S. Jewish leader it was likely rockets would fall on Tel Aviv if a nuclear deal with Iran was blocked and military action ensued, on, uh, one of them said on Wednesday. In a separate appeal to American Jews, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, a fierce opponent of the July 14th Accord, pushed back in a webcast on Tuesday against the Obama administration, argument that the agreement was the only way to avoid eventual war with Iran. The Republican-led House uh, representatives will vote on whether to reject the agreement with, uh, when lawmakers return to Washington in September. Party leaders said on Tuesday setting up a showdown with the president. Uh, Greg Rosenbaum, one of the 20 Jewish leaders who met Obama at the White House on Tuesday, said Israel... Uh, on Israel radio that the president spelled out what exercises a U.S. military option to strike Iran's nuclear facilities would mean if the deal between the world powers and Tehran was scrapped. He said military action by the United States against Iran's nuclear facility is not going to result in an Iran deciding to having a full-fledged war with the United States. Rosenbaum of the National Jewish Democratic Council quoted Obama as telling the forum. Uh, there's also been other statements that, that say that Iran, that, that uh, Barack Obama in this agreement has vowed to protect Iran uh, as an ally. So therefore, if Israel did launch a strike, as Obama has said in the past, uh, that they would come against, uh, they would shoot down any Israeli plane. So I'm sure that still stands with what's going on there and uh, just really making for a lot of tremendous troubles there. Also, another thing that, uh, that we've actually been able to capture ourselves uh, in the Czech Republic, and that is a huge, massive Arab population from the war-torn regions of Syria, uh, Iraq, have now come into the Czech Republic. There are thousands and thousands of Muslims that have come upon this little tiny uh, nation here. And of course that has happened all throughout uh, the European Union as well as uh, other, other uh, countries. But uh, it's interesting to see the large buildup of, of, uh, of the Arabic population around, uh, Muslim population we might add, all over the area here as the war between NATO and its allies continues on. I have wondered if by chance this isn't a plot intentionally to uproot the Arabic people and put them into other nations for a future plan that, they, that the, the New World Order may very much have in mind. And I'm sure um, the Vatican has already looked very in very much detail on how this will actually play out. Uh, anyway, another very interesting news story that is that is today is the 70th anniversary of the Hiroshima, uh, the, uh, new, uh, the atomic bomb that was dropped by the United States. Very much a stain on the American flag that the Americans actually went to this extreme to end their war 
Um, it says, uh, the title here on CNN's news, Grief Horror uh, of Atomic Bomb Remembered 70 Years. Um, lady that was in this here, a survivor of this, explains the ordeal. It says, in the center of Hiroshima, yards from where the world's first atomic attack bomb exploded 70 years ago, stands a dome-shaped bell towards a modest uh, proportions. It is decorated with bronze statues of three children. Their slender arms reach out, spreading wide towards the sky. It looks like a dance of joy, but it leaves me a cho choking back tear, says the reporter. Um, the, the bombing of Hiroshima is a dark and difficult chapter in the U.S. history as an American wandering past the bronze pixies dancing so close to what ground zero. I cannot help but, but feel profound guilt. Um, the person says here, the Children's Peace Monument is dedicated to a child survivor of the A-bomb. Uh, Sadako Sasaki was two years old when the bomb dropped. She survived for almost a decade until she died from leukemia in 1955. Very sad, very sad indeed uh, what happened to the Japanese uh, people as a result of uh, America there. We know that, of course, uh, this all escalated out of control from uh, the attack on Pearl Harbor, uh, but it was certainly unwarranted, very much unwarranted, because the Japanese were willing to surrender already before uh, this attack, uh, the first bomb was dropped. They were willing to surrender when that happened, but because they would not do it unconditionally, the United States decided to drop a second bomb. Totally deplorable, as I said, a stain on the American flag. Uh, it says here that Sasaki was one of the more than 200,000 people killed by Americans' test, uh, terrifying use of atomic force. It was a ruthless demonstration of power repeated three days later in a second atomic attack on Nagasaki. Growing up in the U.S., I learned as a teenager to associate Hiroshima and Nagasaki with the image of two distant, devastated Japanese cities. The textbook taught us that... By dropping atomic bombs on Japan, the U.S. hastened the end of World War II. In other words, the slaughter of hundreds of thousands of civilians ultimately helped save lives. You know, it's just hard to imagine that, that much devastation. Uh, I, I would have to differ. I would have to think that the United States really just wanted to see what could atomic bomb do. Uh, the articles are all over the world, including the Arabic News is, is reporting about the 70th, uh, 70 years anniversary here. And it seems that uh, world news is trying to bring the, the dangers of what society is today because society today is a nuclear power across the globe. Uh, Iran trying to get a nuclear bomb as well. Everyone wanting to have nuclear weapons for superiority and of course it will only end in catastrophe. Uh, I'm reminded of, of, of the biblical passage where it says, whatsoever man sows that shall he reap. And, uh, and one thing that we have to keep in mind, the evils that the U.S. did on Japan in, su in such a tragedy there, uh, this may come back around to haunt us in the end. I'm Stephen Benoon with a day of remembrance for the uh, survivors of the Japanese atomic bomb and our condolences and, and heartfelt, sincere apologies to the Japanese people that the United States actually went to that length to bring the war to an end. Um, anyway, shalom and God bless you.